Kim Georgitis, and this week, Tommy Fox will be in your face. Hi, I'm Peter Vandermeer. This week, Charlie Pastriak will be behind the wheel on the Waterford Speedball Racing Show. But first, let's take a look at our mini stock highlights. The conclusion of Foxwood's Final Four would kick off on the 8th with the mini stocks led to the line by the 44 of Kim Buckley alongside the 22 of Rob MacArthur. Buckley would jump through the lead, bringing along third place starter Mike Walsh in the five. The caution would quickly fly for a spin in three and four involving the 31 of Warren Pope and the 21 of Dennis Perry. Back on the green, Walsh would get the jump and open up a commanding lead over Buckley and the 7X of La Chapelle. Walsh's car would drop off the pace on lap nine, giving the lead to the 53 of Darnstadt. Darnstadt would continue to set the pace as the 55 of Jigalewski pressured the 68 of Carnes. Lap 17, Jigalewski would move to the high side of Darnstadt down the backstretch and take the top spot at the line. The caution would fly on lap 39 when the 31 of Pope would spin in turn one. Back under green, Darnstadt would get the jump over Jigalewski with Carnes falling in for third. The caution would fly for the last time on lap 46 when the 8 RI of Art Allen would get together with the 98 of Mike Muller with Allen's car left resting against the Armco. As a safety precaution, Allen was removed from the vehicle and transported to L&M Hospital where he was determined to be okay. Back under green, Darnstadt would again jump to the lead followed by Jigalewski and Karn. Jigalewski would make one final attempt, but Darnstadt would go on for the win, followed by Jigalewski second, Karns third, Olofsky fourth, and Luke Tussing rounds out the top five. With his third place finish, Karns wins the Mini Stock Championship by two points over Dan Darnstadt. Jake. Dan, congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, tough year. It was a good battle right down the end. Uh, we won the battle, we lost the war, but we'll be back next year. Jigalewski had a lot for you. He was working really good on the high side. You kept working that low groove. You gave him a lot of room trying to get by you. And then those last couple laps, you started driving real defensively, trying to hold him off, trying to pick up the win. Yeah, I wanted every, uh, every I tried to get two cars between me and Jeff. That's all I needed to win the championship. And uh, I could hold him off, but nobody could get by Jeff, I guess. The mini stock champion here at the Waterford Speed Bowl for 1995 to be Mr. Jeff Carnes, driver of the number 68. Take it at home. MG Gear, take it away, buddy. <laughs> Jeff, congratulations. Thank you very much. Woo! <laughs> oh, Jeff, when I talked to you during that caution flag, you were a little worried. You were nervous. You were actually shaking in the car. <laughs> You're right, I was. I was very nervous. Whew, Rob was running real good. The car was starting to get a little bit of a push. And all I just wanted to do was just hang on the third. Whew. You guys, you guys basically run to win, and you just let the points kind of fall where they do. Or did you guys run for points, where you just kind of make yourself nuts, like your father does, where you figure it all out on paper. And you know, I have to finish here to pick up the championship. That's what I was doing. I was running for the points. I had to finish where I did, and that's what I did. Push it right to the limit. Jeff, congratulations. You're the new mini stock champion for the 1995 season. the strictly stock field of competitors ready to do battle for 50 laps here we go green flag leading the field to the green would be the 47 of ted chafee and the 57 of jimmy belisle at the green belisle would get the jump over chafee and the 74 of joe mancini right out of the box 
box. Ted Chafee losing us to Belial. On lap 18, Gertz would catch Belial and work the high side for the top spot. With Reed following along for second. High side as Gertz blows by the 57 of Belial. He brings along Ed Reed. Moore. Here we go. Reed would then work the high side to take the top spot over Gertz. Meanwhile, back in the pack, the 38 of point leader Bud Keeney was battling the 66 of Rob Lozniak for fourth. Meanwhile, back up front, Bailey, having moved to second, would pressure Reed, but time would run out as Reed would go on for the victory with Bailey second, Gersh third, Keeney fourth, and Ernie LaRose fifth. Ed, congratulations. Thank you. Man, that was a long one. Never led a, a race that long before in my life. It was it was tough. I seen Charlie was knocking on the door and I just had to drive my own race and I had to just go where I knew, thought he was going to go to hold him off. I think he had a little faster car today, but I just tried to hold him off as long as I could. With his fourth place finish, Bud Keeney earns the Budweiser Strictly Stock Championship. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm down trackside with Bud Keeney. He's this new Strictly Stock Champion for the 1995 season, but consistency and persistence paid off. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I don't know what else to say. I just want to thank everybody, the whole, the crew, the owner, all the sponsors, my mom, my wife, my daughter, everybody. In the beginning of the season, you are in a strong pints battle with Eric Webster. Eric destroyed his car. You let him drive your backup car, and that's just a great act of sportsman coming from you. Possibly if you wrecked this car, Eric was in your backup car, and things could have played out a lot different for you. Yeah, Eric called up on the Tuesday after he wrecked the car bad, and he wanted to know if he could drive it, and we said sure. Yeah, it's coming from a great sportsman, a great race car driver, picking up the 1995 championship for the Strictly Stocks. Bud Keeney, congratulations on behalf of the management and the Waterford Speedball. Congratulations, Bud. Thank you very much. to be in this position this late in the season. This is our last week in the racing. Hopefully we'll come away with a good finish and secure the championship today. Now you took a year off last year and uh, tell us a little bit why. We went to race at Stafford Motor Speedway last year. Tried our hand in the late model racing up there. We ran at Stafford this year also. We missed the championship by one position on a racetrack last weekend. Hopefully we can get a little restitution here. I like running at the Speed Bowl. The new uh, management has done a great job of turning things around here. The competitors are great. I've had a really successful year here, a really fun year. Now looking at your car and uh, the motor, and how's that treating you? Uh, the motor ran great all season long. We actually have two cars. We have a backup car. We're, uh, we have both cars running pretty good at this point. Hopefully we won't need to use the backup car, but we've had good motor success all year. The, the cars have held together pretty good. All in all, it's been a successful year, and like I say, hopefully things turn out well today. Who's doing your motors? Larry's Auto Machine from North Stonington. He's been my engine builder for uh, about six years now. I've won 44 races in Connecticut at all the different tracks, and they've all been with Larry's Auto Machine power under the hood. You're driving for somebody down here, and tell us a little bit about him. I'm driving for the uh, the Goodrow Racing Team, Tom and Al Goodrow. Al Goodrow has won five modified track championships here uh, back in the 70s with Dick Dunn driving. Tom is a, a former late model competitor, a driver. We decided last winter that uh, we might get together and form a team. It, it was a little bit slow in the making, but we came out this spring. Uh, we've won five races so far this year. We had a pretty successful year. It's a, it was a good venture to get into with those two guys. Are you taking that same car up at Stafford? Uh, I drive my own car at Stafford. Uh, it's also sponsored by Larry's Auto Machine. It's a family car. The, the Fox family owns that. I've been driving uh, cars that my father has owned for about 16 years now. So, You are a winner. You win a lot of races. How do you do it? It's, uh, a lot, it's a team effort. A good motor program, a good chassis program. 
I have uh, two crews now of dedicated guys. One crew that comes here on Saturdays to help us out and another crew that works on my car on Fridays. Uh, just dedication, a lot of hard, hard work. The guys win the races in the garage for me. They get the car ready, they prepare it, they do a good job every week. All I have to do is sit down on the thing and steer it. Hey, you're taking the car out for warm-ups. How's it feeling? The car's running good today. Both cars are. We let Mike Holdridge, a, uh, another competitor in the late model division, drive our backup car. He's getting that thing around pretty good, too. We're pretty confident with this, this weekend upon us here. The car's running good. I feel pretty comfortable. I think we'll be in good shape. All right, thank you, Tommy. Do real well tonight. Thank you. All right, Kim Georgitis, in your face. Next up on the eighth would be the late models, led to the line by the 25 of Mike Zoransky and the 34 of Tucker Reynolds Sr. Stand on the throttle up through the gearbox into turn number one. At the line, Zoransky would get the advantage with the 43 of Ron Angiolo moving low to battle Reynolds for second. Here comes Tucker Reynolds Sr. and the 43 Contact between Reynolds and Angiolo would send the field scrambling as Reynolds would spin. Further contact was avoided and no yellow was thrown. Everybody misses him. Great heads up driving by this field of late model. Come on, Browers. A lap 14 restart would give Joe Mullen in the action amusements number 23 a shot at Zoransky for the top spot. Mullen would get the position followed three. by the 18 Everybody's of Danny the Field. Up the middle, and out of the front comes the 23 of Mullen. 19, wheel, the 19 wheel, of Phil Rondo would catch and pass one. Mullen on lap 26 one with John Brower Jr. moving the third to pressure Mullen. He is out in Meanwhile, Oval back in the, the pack, the three of Jordan Tommy Fox and the 89 Split of Larry Cody were battling, not only for position, but for oh, the championship. A mid-race restart would allow Cody to close up and overtake Rondo on lap 46. Power off of turn four. Here comes Tommy fight now. Rondo would battle back, back and race under Cody for the top spot the on the lap 56. Next time by 44 laps to go. Here goes Rondo for the pass off of turn four. Lap 72, the 58 of Kevin Devis is making his presence known here moving past Fox for third. Back up front, though, it was all Phil Rondo as he went on for the victory, followed by Devis in second, Matt Kobe Luck third, Rob Janovic fourth, and John Brower Jr. fifth. Phil, congratulations. Oh, thank you. I've been uh, kind of fighting a cold all week, uh, trying to catch my breath now, and uh, I'd like to thank all the sponsors, H&H, uh, &H, Marvel Auto Body, Mears Construction, CB Fab, Sago Starter and Alternators, uh, D's Mini Mart, TJ's Cafe, all the crew, the fans, the track. Uh, it's been an awesome year, you know. Come up a little bit short at the end, but uh, hey, the car's flying. Phil, I noticed going through one and two, your car would push up a little bit. Kevin can just get the nose underneath you, then just going down, coming out of the turn, you just rocket past him. Uh, the car was starting to get a little bit loose coming in, and loose and uh, I was putting more front brake into it to push the nose so it wouldn't bake the right rear tire off but uh it worked out Phil you sound tired you just went 100 laps you have 100 more to go in the modifies you think you can pull off two in a row oh we're gonna try uh hopefully I'm up to it <laughs> Tommy Fox's ninth place finish was good enough to give him the Budweiser late model championship Tom congratulations thanks thanks a lot this means a lot to us we're happy to be the uh, 1995 Waterford Speed Bowl track champions my hat's off to Larry Cody and Phil Rondo, Matt Kobluck and Kevin Devis and all the guys who gave me a good run all year long. It was a lot of fun. Now, Tom, the car seemed to go away for, wait on you a little bit, but you still hung on to it, just running for that position, just trying to hang on and finish up the race in the positions that you did, and you brought home the championship. Yeah, it was a tough run, other than the fact that the car wouldn't turn and it wouldn't slow down. We had no brakes. It was making good power on the straightaway. That's about it at the end. Tom, you really had your hands full coming home you picked up the championship for this year congratulations to you tom is this your first championship uh this is my second one we won a championship in 1993 too i'd like to thank all my fans for supporting me all year long you guys are fantastic thanks a lot tommy fox congratulations ken with them back up to you all right ladies and gentlemen there I've already got rules meetings scheduled and a banquet scheduled, so this place has really made a turnaround, and I'm very happy to see it, and I'm looking forward to the race tomorrow.
What about 100 laps against these guys on this racetrack? It's, uh, it's got to feel pretty good, I guess. Yeah, well, the days of coming back into somebody's backyard and uh, taking their gravy away are pretty much gone. These competitors run good here. They run hard. They've run here all year. I haven't run here in a year and a half. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be, if the circumstances work out right and I do well, I'll be more than happy. But uh, right now, I'm just looking to run good and have some fun and maybe uh, broaden my horizon a little bit. Feelings about getting back in the car uh, was a little bit of adjustment right away, or did you kind of slide in there and feel comfortable? Uh, the biggest difference is the, uh, the horsepower. There's quite a bit of difference in horsepower. Uh, the SK motor is used around 375 horsepower versus the third motor, which is about 155. Uh, pardon me. <laughs> 555. So uh, the biggest difference is the horsepower, but a race car is a race car. It still goes in a turn. You have to step on a brake and step on a gas. Let's talk a little bit about the tour now. You're fifth in points. You've had a pretty good season out there. A little unfortunate occurrence at New Hampshire, I guess, where uh, everybody was going for one spot at the same time. But it's, it, overall, I guess it's been a pretty good year for you, huh? Yeah, the actual finishes haven't reflected uh, where I stand in the points. We've run better at every event this year and qualified better at every event but the finishes don't reflect that uh it's too bad because like at loudon i had 100 yards to go for a second place finish uh, at stafford i was leading you know i had the tires go away at holland i was i led up till 10 laps to go and had uh, ricky fuller run into me we bumped a little bit so a lot of things have happened that haven't made my finishes be better so uh, right now we have to be satisfied with seventh place in the points but going to thompson the last two events uh, really makes me look forward a little bit because that is one of my best tracks. That's where I recorded my first feature win on the Federal Modified Tour. So I'm looking forward to going back there and uh, we have the World Series next weekend. We have a weekend off which is the Race of Champions in Flemington and then we go back for the finale at uh, Thompson which is 150 lapper with the Bush North car. So uh, if I can put together two good finishes there, we're looking at maybe a top five in the points. Well, it may be a uh, tour schedule coming up, but for this weekend, Charlie Pastriak is here at the Speed Bowl and uh, going to give it one heck of a shot in tomorrow's Foxwoods finale 100 lapper for the modified cars. Closing out the action on this final weekend would be the new mod squad led to the line by the 31 junior of Jimmy Smith and the 14 of Warren Lee. At the stripe Smith would get the jump with the 19 of Moose Hewitt moving up to challenge Lee for second. By lap five, the 8X of Phil Rondo had worked his way to second behind Hewitt and would overtake the top spot on lap six. On lap 14, Tucker Reynolds Jr. worked his way from his seventh starting spot to move past Rondo for the top spot with the 31 of Todd Cerebolo close behind. Reynolds would continue to lead until the caution would fly on lap 22 for a spin involving the 31X of Charlie Pastiak, the 14 of Warren Lee, and the 54 of Eric Byrne. Back under green, Saravolo would make a charge under Reynolds to take the top spot on lap 25. Lap 42, Ted Christopher in the 13 helps to bring out yet another caution for a spin involving the 33 of Mark Lachanes and the 31X of Charlie Pastiak. Back under green, Saravolo would continue to lead until the caution would fly on lap 93 for a spin involving the 26 of Don Fowler and the 21 of Mike Gaeta. Back under green, Saravolo and the 43 of Jerry Pearl would battle bumper to bumper and door handle to door handle for the top spot. Pearl would come out on top and go on to collect his fourth win of 1995, followed by Saravolo second, Broderick third, Chris Jones fourth, and Tucker Reynolds Jr. fifth. With his third place finish, Jimmy Broderick becomes the Budweiser Modified Champion. Jerry, congratulations. Thank you very much. There's a lot of people I gotta really thank here tonight. First of all, I gotta thank Porter and Chester, Waterford Speedball, my crew, everybody that's involved. I really appreciate all the help. It was a real tough season. Jerry, you guys side by side balance, sparks flying as you went down and to turns three and four. You came out on top. I think you drove your heart out yet. Just pushing that car is <laughs> <laughs> the champagne bath. Champagne flying down. There you go, lane. folks. <laughs> as we as we don the champion with a good spray of champagne and a good mouthful. Back to the interview with MG. Uh, Jerry. <laughs> yeah, I really drove my heart out. I knew if if I didn't make it on the last few laps, it was going to be all over. And uh, we rubbed a little bit, but we're both 
in our lane, so, I mean, I gave him plenty of room. Jerry, the power under the hood, Larry's Auto Machine. They picked up the championship in the late model. They picked the one up for the modified. These guys are unbelievable. They give you all kinds of power all year long. My hat's off to them. Gary Espinosa and the guys doing a great job. You got to be pleased with your with your motor program. Yep. I, I didn't mention Gary before, but Gary, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah! Get a very happy crew down here in Victory Lane. Back up to you. Hope you're